After fighting a war in one desert, Ross Boyce got one million dollars to save lives in another. The National Institutes of Health is bankrolling his project to reduce malaria and the number of its victims in western Uganda. This is Dr. Ross. Boyce grew up in Clemens, North Carolina and thought he would follow his father to the Air Force Academy, but his eyesight was going to keep him out of the pilot's seat, so he opted for Army ROTC at Davidson. Restless, he switched gears and after graduation postponed medical school to sign up for the infantry. But after you know, three, four years of intensive study, and I, I worked very hard at Davidson, um, I wanted to get out and do something um, and not continue in the classroom. I didn't want to spend another two, three years sitting in lectures. I wanted to get out into the world and gain some experience, some you know, real-world experience. Four months later, hijacked airliners plowed into the World Trade Center, Pentagon, and a Pennsylvania field. He ended up leading a combat platoon in Iraq. At the end of his tour, he realized that he needed to do something else and headed to medical school. But after two years in classrooms and labs, Boyce saw Army friends being sent back to Iraq, and he volunteered to return. He ended up leading civil affairs efforts for his units, helping farmers, drilling wells, putting up buildings, and training midwives. When I left Iraq the first time, I felt like I was walking away from a house on fire. When I left the second time, I felt like even if the house was on fire, I had done my best to try to put it out. Back in North Carolina, Boyce finished medical school and thought he'd plotted the path ahead until it took a turn. Coming out of Iraq, that experience was how can I use what I learned there or the bad experiences that I had there and turn them into some sort of positive um, direction in life. And I came here to Uganda in 2013 somewhat reluctantly because this was just a partnership site that where I trained for residency had established a clinic and I came here and within a couple of days of being here and seeing the malaria and seeing all the kids who were sick, I kind of realized I could repurpose a lot of those skills that I learned um, through school and through my service in the military for something good in a place that um, a lot of the challenges don't require you to be so smart. You just have to figure out the logistics and figure out how to get things that other people have already figured out work to a place like this. Treatments and prevention for malaria already existed. The problem was geography and logistics and data, the kinds of things that Boyce excelled at when he was in Iraq. So Boyce started by making maps of villages because none existed. And then at the local clinic, he found stacks of notebooks with information written in pencil in a dark, dusty room with no light. When I first started trying to find information, I mean, it was I guess the best way to put it is like a Harry Potter novel where they like go in and look at some old book of spells and there's dust everywhere. I mean, that was kind of the, the baseline that I started from. And, you know, that's, that's nothing against them and the site. It's, it's the nature of the resources that are available. And also, I think, thinking about they've collected that data for years and what have they ever done with it because no one pays any attention to it. Boyce leveraged his maps and his data to receive small grants to build equipment and do more work that led to larger grants. Last fall, he received $1 million from NIH and $100,000 from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Early in the project, he met his wife, Raquel Reyes, also a doctor and researcher, and when the two got engaged, residents of the village held a ceremony and presented them with traditional wedding clothes. A recent trip back focused on potential support from a coffee company which buys beans from the nearby farmers and on the possibility of applying an insecticide to the wraps that women use to carry babies on their backs. That would help keep mosquitoes which carry malaria off the babies. Boyce sees progress in his own role. He is leading and fundraising now. No more dark rooms with dusty books. No more hikes into the mountains. The challenge hasn't gone away though. It's just different. Things are picking up steam. Our model is working. 
um, the challenge now becomes a grant is a grant over a limited amount of time. We ask a question, we answer it, but then we have to, if, it, if it, the answer is yes, this works, how do we keep it going?